Right. One, two, three. One, two, three. Got me. Okay. One, two, three. Two vote. One, two, three. That's not how it works. I need to hear the audio separately. There, I'm just gonna hear two claps and we'll be like, which clap is which? <laughs> no, it will not just be fine. Do you wanna just restart it right now? We've already we've already started. Okay. Welcome everybody to episode, I believe this is 21 of the Fish Tank Podcast. I just, we could have started about 15 minutes ago, but Louis and Tubo <laughs> told me that I needed to shave because it looked so hideous and gruesome that he I needed to shave. He needed to. You don't understand. Like, there were just exactly it, it three wisps <laughs> of black hair at the very edges of his mouth. And that was the only thing I saw while looking at it was just the three edges. It's just like a little, it's like he took marker and missed a little bit right here and right here. And then it was just. That was your mustache, man. Okay, but here's the part that was annoying me at the beginning of this conversation. Okay, they're talking to me as if it's just like, dude, you can never rock a mustache and a beard at all. You need to shave no, that immediately. No, we didn't say that. No, 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 because no, you literally you said, you literally right said, now. you don't understand. You need to shave right now. And I'm like, guys, I literally yes. look like this every day because I shave no. a bunch because I know no. that I can't rock any type of facial hair whatsoever. <laughs> so, well, the lighting was perfectly bad for this one because he highlighted that. Had me and Louis ever said it anything? It did look like there was like a little bit of poop. Like it was, there's like, like just a little schmutz. bit of poop. There was just schmutz there. It wasn't that bad. They're over exaggerating. I really didn't. We didn't need to waste uh, that time. But dude, it took audio listeners. Seconds. You're not missing out on anything because right now I'm clean shaven. I look just as normal as I usually do because I, I shave. <laughs> well, actually, they are missing out because I look fucking good. That's true. I can't tell because he has a, a headset I got, on. I got a haircut. I'll show you. Yeah, now he can't hear us at all right now. We could shit talk. I can he hear know. you guys. He <laughs> <You> wouldn't know. <laughs> Dude, I take the best pictures. For viewers, for those of you that don't know, Fish has this thing where whenever he takes a picture of himself, he finds the worst angle to take it from. He's never and then taken gets a... as close yeah. to it as possible. He puts it like right under his jaw so you can look directly at his brain, like through his nose. Like <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. whenever it, whenever he brings it up, he's like, "Dude, what are you talking about? I, that's what I look like. like that's just I, I'm he taking insists. the picture, dude. What are you talking about? You talking been going on for people? years. <laughs> like, he just sends us pictures of him like looking all goofy. He's like, "Fish, just take a normal photo. <laughs> like, this is just how I look. I'm like, yeah, but you can take it from a better angle. <laughs> it has been years. Like wow. just once, for just look at like the normal way you're supposed to take a picture. So you yeah, from good. like a little is, up angle. Yeah, a little up and fr have something to frame your face. Like have something. Yeah, who says you're it. supposed like, to? Who? And like <laughs> that will make everyone that wants a good picture. You mongrel. Do you not remember MySpace fish, angles? Your fish I never angle used MySpace. like <gasps> oh, ridiculous. I used I aim in MySpace either. I used aim too. Yeah. I never got into aim either. I w I just never did anything on the computer that was like. Oh, social, speaking like, of very attractive. Like speaking of very attractive photos, I did want to bring this up because uh, it actually I was informed of it through this Discord that we're using right now, which is that a there was a Gmod um, workshop person. Do you guys know what workshop is? Yeah. Okay, well, Workshop is this add-on that you kind of have for uh, certain games. And what it does is that it's community-made mods. You can use these mods in certain uh, games. Like, for example, Gary's Mod. It has mm -hmm. a workshop, and people can upload models that you can animate in Gary's Mod or, like, use as your character or, like, maps and just... Cool enhancements, cool mods, basically. Somebody got banned from, I believe it was Gary's Mod or some other type of Steam game, but that part is relevant. Was, so out it was of just workshop, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, out no, of no, anger, no, no, what they did, they were actually a workshop author who was adding mods to the game. They made it so that their workshop mods, um, when you load into the game, it just loads up a screamer and like a picture of, I think it's pronounced like Goatsy or something. Someone pulling apart their ass cheeks. Yeah, yeah. Someone <laughs> pulling apart their ass You're cheeks. Playing, so some child just playing Gary's mod. Exactly. And then, oh, That's no. what I'm thinking about. Because, yeah, and I'm thinking especially with something as horrible as Gary's mod, if you have these add-ons, if you're subscribed to those add-ons... Yeah, it's as soon as you load up the game, like you're just gonna get jump scared with Goatsy right in your face. And there are definitely a lot of children playing Gary's Mod. We would know because there was like a Harry Potter, Harry Potter RP worlds that you oh can go God. to that are just filled with nothing but like children and just. There and all are that. Harry Potter RP worlds in Gary's Mod. Me and Mod. Fish, 100%. Did, we, did I do that with you? That or... wasn't me, but I know it's a thing. Okay, what? so me and my That's friend, uh, me and my friend who will remain nameless, we used to go into Harry Potter G Mod communities and pretend that we were in middle school together and uh, like he would tell people's like you know he has a lot of anger issues and then 
And then I would just sit in the back. Dude, I told you not to tell them that. Dude. <laughs> just like, God. Mom said I'm just like saying really Mom weird Mom said shit. it's just weird mood swings. I, I have I have a I have it all filmed. I have it like Did it's like three hours of fucking uh, Gary's yeah, it's like mod, a stream just VOD. Scrolling. Just it it's so, I don't think it's Damn it's it. not very good. Oh, like it's okay. it's it's good, but it's very offensive. I oh, think. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, this person who is apparently a coder, you know, knows how to upload stuff to Workshop. They left a specific message, and I thought that this was interested interesting that they can just do something as difficult as coding too. But I think you you know better than me and louis it's how, impossible coding, yeah coding people are the closest thing we come to magic in this world yeah, and that's pretty similar like coding and workshop stuff right like uploading mods to a platform and then getting yeah i would say so for sure yeah this was one of the messages that they sent pay me money or die you effing stupid piece of shit f you i want you and your family died in suffering i killed your <laughs> i killed your 12 woman i killed your mother i killed your god eat my shit and lick my balls I just Wait, thought. Who is he sending this to? That was just a message <laughs> that appears on the screen when you boot up Gmod. If you had those add-ons <laughs> enabled. Wait, so I might if I upload if I turn it's on so Gmod right now. You need to be you need the... to be subscribed to the certain uh, uh, models. But what if I am? You, I checked. I'm oh, not. Yeah, you'll see it. Yeah, you'll you'd see, see it. it. Do you oh own God. a thing, or do you have a thing called Glue Library that you want to? Yeah, yeah, that's the name of it. Glue Library. That's one of them. Maybe. Which I thought was hilarious because I saw a meme about it where it was just like, Mr. White is like uh, Jesse from um, Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. It's just like on the ground, like tied up. He's like, Mr. White, you don't understand. You have to unload glue library. Mr. White, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, speaking speaking of Harry Potter, watching movies with Tubold it's the worst. is the worst experience it's literally the worst. ever. <laughs> So okay, <laughs> listeners, I know that you, we might like look like a like a you know just like a like a content group like we'll just get together to record these podcasts and play <laughs> games together. But no, we're actually friends and we hang out sometimes, um, off stream and off recording. And we <laughs> just look at if you're watching, just look at Fish's face while I was saying that because he is having flashbacks of how awful it was to watch this movie with yeah, two Yeah, it was miserable. Okay, so, the, okay, so the worst one I ever did was 19 whatever. The, 1917. The, the but let me finish. That one was And bad. we'll okay. just watch movies. One... It was Bumbler's first time and his <laughs> wife's first time watching Harry Potter. And yes, we joke around sometimes. But too bold. <laughs> will just it's I just him that. alone laughing at full volume into his mic when we know he can just stop pressing push to talk yeah that's <laughs> the big thing that's the big Dude, thing I, I just how am i the only one laughing i don't understand because of too bold okay i won't you know i know the movie every been about like 10 years the now. only one laughing Dude, i he counted says Avada Kedavra so stupidly. i counted I every I every death in the last movie of Harry Potter was laughed at by the group, mostly because of Tubal. <laughs> because of Tubal, dude. Yes. Every, every moment, death, somebody every laughed. Every moment that needed to happen was just... <laughs> just it's because Voldemort says a Kedavra like that. He goes, oh, what are you <laughs> You know, it's every funny, single it's actually, death. It's actually in my house right now. Ruben has an elder wand. He, he bought it for like 60 bucks. It's like the full like elder one, and he'll just walk around with it, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll just hear like upstairs like. Ooh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Dude, it's so funny. <laughs> but yes, it is funny. But you don't need to laugh for the whole scene and keep your shit like. Uh, and also, dude, uh, there's other people that are spoiling shit. It's a one shot movie. It's it's an amazing film about uh like really sadness and, and and war and fucking like craziness and he's just making jokes the whole time. It's like, dude, and not only that, oh, it was so, that movie watching experience was so bad. We started the Discord with like maybe 6 people in there. And then by the end of the movie there was like 28. 
Just people yeah, talking. It's not exaggerated. <laughs> it was we literally. I feel like because of that, we we started a new server. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck this, dude. <laughs> no more. <laughs> yeah, it is true. I was just like Louis wanted to show our, this group that we were in just the movie for the first I time. I bought the movie. Bought the movie, and then people just kept rolling in. First of all, we didn't. This was, I guess this. Hey, what you guys new, watching? This must have been, yeah. This must have been a new thing, but amongst the group, because every time somebody joined, they're like, "Yo, what's up? How's it going? What are you guys doing here? Wait, what movie is this? Like they're just obnoxious hey! as shit. Yeah, it's like, hey! like shut, shut the, the, fuck the fuck up. up. <laughs> Dude, Discord hits weird, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, we were clowning a lot more with Harry Potter than for sure. Because I mean, movies. most of the group has seen it for sure. But like, just watching movies with you in general, Tubal, is just it's okay, just a that's bad just time. That's just on Discord. When I'm in real life, it's fine. Unless yeah, because you're, you're asleep. The worlds. Yeah, true. But if we're like, <laughs> if we're watching War of the Worlds, then Louis gets so mad at me because it's such a dumb movie, and Louis is just. We're not starting the con No, we're not starting it again. That was like a two-hour argument. Yeah, I did. I, were we drunk? I don't remember how it started. I don't. Remember. You were oh, drunk. It was. It was. I'm Dan's, just saying. It was Dan's wedding. Yeah, that was a uh, that was that was a great time. The movie that, that was, was the written. The book was written in like 1890 something or 1870 something, <laughs> right? And the guy was equating the aliens <laughs> to Spanish conquistadors. <laughs> or like the people that went over to America and they started dying because they had foreign diseases. Yeah, I get that. Like that's not lost on me. I'm just saying like it is lost aliens. on you. Apparently, no, it's not. It's I just think it's I could like I can agree that I, I I understand what he was trying to do with the with the aliens and dying to like the common cold of Earth. But I'm just saying like they're aliens. They have achieved space travel. They're from Mars. They should know what germs are. If you think also, traveling from one planet that. to the same planet in the solar system is achieving space travel, you're dense. What do you mean? You're literally going through space. How is We've that not done space that. travel? We've yeah, we done have, that. We've we gone far to go to space. That's just a thing. What are you I want to let you about? know that this this idea is still in modern media. This isn't a spoiler. This is not a spoiler for Doctor Strange and the multiverse emphasis on multiverse of madness. Like, okay, it's kind of assumed that there's different multiverses traveled through. One of the things that somebody says to a character when they travel to a new multiverse is, "You might have a disease on you that we don't know how to control, so that's why you're locked up in this cage." <laughs> Literally, 2022, yeah. and that's still a plot point, and nobody said yeah, that's dumb. That makes sense, but they understood that. They understood that that would be a thing. How do aliens that travel through space with giant crazy Because they never had our things. Thing? But it doesn't matter. You should still be aware that they're a thing. Do you understand that? Like, you get that there's diseases on your planet that affect you. So you might go to somewhere else. And there Their be planet was that dying. That's why they came to Earth. Yes, but you still know what diseases are and can take precautions against them. Maybe don't go out of the ship. Maybe keep it airtight. I think, it's true. I think I they were know, Because they were it. sucking up the water. Then purify it. That's Shut what I don't understand. I, I think it. I think it took. A, what do you call? It? I think it took a, a good amount of time before they actually started getting hit by the disease. So yes. they were controlling all the other diseases that are assumed to be there. They were Not taking in all those diseases or blocking. And it wasn't even diseases. It was like a the common yeah, cold. I guess it wasn't. Yeah, I'm just like saying it doesn't make sense for an advanced spacefaring species to not understand how diseases. They're work. about as advanced as we are. Except no, that they have like not. disintegrators and stuff. I to say, and abductors. No way in hell. They also yeah. traveled through Casual lightning. flying ships. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, originally it was supposed was to be uh, meteorize, meteors. Originally. Okay. Well, either way, they traveled through lightning in the movie. So, you know, I would assume either you way, learned how to transport your body. Honestly, <laughs> you don't watch War of the Worlds for the fucking uh, <laughs> plot. You watch it because it's a fucking dope alien I invasion know, movie. I like the movie. I'm just saying the way that they lose is stupid. It doesn't mean that that can't happen that way. I'm just saying it's dumb. That's all I've ever tried to say is that it's a stupid way to lose. They can lose to it. But I'm pretty care. sure during the movie you're saying it over and over again. Over and it. over, and you and wouldn't drop it. Wouldn't, you it's a wouldn't drop lose. it. Look, okay, oh okay, okay. So it's you. God. You laugh at movies, right? Bumbler, he always he always goes down that route of like, this is so unrealistic. Why would he make this decision? Oh he my calls God, the characters yeah, dumb yeah. all the time. Even if it's, you know, a, mostly a kid's movie and literally magic. Um, what does Louis do? Louis just cries Louis at movies. Louis did the thing where this is apparating. 
This is, say that uh, 400 times every <laughs> single time they teleport. He'll go, this no, is stop actually the movie, stop the movie. Rewind it. Fish, this is teleporting. Every single time they grab each other's arm, go, <laughs> 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 that was just one joke, though. I don't, I don't, I don't think I, I, I yeah, ruined Louis does cry movie experiences. Though. That is true. Louis cries at literally everything. What did I cry Anytime recently to? Something? And I'm just a good time to watch movies with. Yeah. If you want, if you want a feel good movie, just watch any movie with Louis. And as soon as some character is injured, Louis will turn to you and a single not even tear injured. will come down. Even if, even if, uh, uh, it's not even injured. It's like if like something really awesome happens to a character, I'll fucking start crying. If there is a foreshadow <laughs> of an epic event coming, Louis will start bawling. You will drown. <laughs> Bring an umbrella. A tear coming down his eye every time. And I cried like so really much sad. at uh, everything, uh, everywhere, all at once. Oh my god! I still haven't seen that one. Oh yeah, so my good. mom also recommended Asian that one to me. Through like four billion different timelines, right? Yeah. I've been heard. I've heard nothing but good things about that movie. The one I think. have seen recently that was dog shit was um, Morbius. <laughs> you saw? I watched with. I watched that with my uh, your chats and whatnot in Discord, and uh, wow, that movie was bad, dude. However, there was one saving grace, and he had that dude from um, uh, Doctor Who having one scene where he's just dancing, and there's no real reason for it, and it's probably the greatest. Like, did you catch the? Did you catch the where <laughs> the cops are looking at the footage of the Doctor Who character killing the people, and then he goes, "That's not the Doctor." It's like. Who? That, that's the doctor. <laughs> who? That's Doctor yeah. Who right there. <laughs> yeah. I did catch that. I did catch oh, that. they make a doctor. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen the movie, uh, so I don't know. The best part about that movie is there's. It's okay. This, this that's the favorite. The, scene. You don't have this to. Is, it's it's so bad. It's good. But, and not even actually. No, that's wrong. It's it's just a terrible, terrible movie. But like, there's one scene where they definitely had footage that they wanted to go into, or at least some follow up to this. But at one point. Morbius walks over to these guys that just have, for some reason, a counterfeiting mill that's like right off the street, and leave all the he scientists goes into stuff. one doorway. Yeah, he goes he goes up to them and he's just like, "All of you get out, but leave the science stuff." And then he goes over to intimidate someone, and then, and he, then he makes he's a just, cure. He makes this Morbius face where he's like where he's like morbing, right? Where he's like he has his <laughs> jaw real long, and he's just like ah, whatever. The guy's like, "What are you?" And he's like. I am Venom, and then it just cuts basically. Like, it just and in the like trailer, in the trailer, it said, "No, nah, I'm just kidding," but I think Jared Leto was like, "No, I want Morbius to be a serious, like, no jokes," and then and I, took that, like, took that out. The most awkward scene. Yeah, but then ever. that makes no because sense because he's pause. not Venom. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And there's no Venom. mention of Venom. And it's just the guy. Just they try to reference Venom so many times. It's it so cringe. It's I, and I'm I'm comfortable saying this because Jared Leto completely destroyed the meme, but like, you know, if you ask me if you ask me like four days ago, I'd be like, no, Morbius was the best movie I've ever seen. But uh, <laughs> now that Jared Leto has killed the meme, I'm okay with saying. How that. did he kill the yes, meme? It was he, he fucking acknowledged it. he acknowledged it. Oh, oh. He said it's Morbin time, so it's gone. <laughs> that was the end of it. No, you weren't supposed to hear it until the second movie came out. I didn't know he. Mm, flat exactly. out said it already what on like social so media they brought, or something they brought back yeah he, he put out a, a morbius 2 it's morbin time oh. script it, yeah they brought it back um, for a week to the theaters wow you okay they bought it they brought it back to a thousand theaters and it made eighty two thousand dollars that's crazy and you, okay look eighty two thousand dollars sounds like a lot of money kind of no, and it, not, it, for not not for movies but for me like i mean obviously eighty two thousand yeah, dollars is a lot sure. of money but if you put it into perspective of what they did, every theater made eighty-two dollars. <laughs> That's probably the best part. Honestly, <laughs> that's so good. Eighty-two dollars <laughs> per theater. Yeah. And I want to know what the Sony exec was. He's like, "What do you mean eighty-two dollars?" <laughs> <laughs> you told me this was a hit on the internet. Oh, I mean, yes, yeah, sir, it was. The like, disconnect between execs and meme culture yeah it's hilarious i was like I, I want it to be an intern i want so badly for it to have been an intern that'd be like no trust me this will do great the second time around no i bet but the intern was like hey maybe um don't do that 
<laughs> and then no, but I like that, the idea of the intern being just a malicious prick. It just be like, this will burn so much of their money. <laughs> it was immediately fired. <laughs> Dude, like, so worth it, though. Imagine being able to tell that story and be like, oh, yeah, I was the guy that put Morbius back me. in theaters the second time. I greenlit that. that. I did that. I would I would wear that as a badge of honor. That's more than me working at Harvard. That's more than, like, any everything else. It's more. I put Morbs in theaters twice. I bought the movie for $20. <laughs> I did, too. I did, too. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to admit it. That was the worst piece of media I've ever consumed. And now I own it forever. It. And now it's mine. I it's have so four. I have four Morbius posters and a Morbius T-shirt, and the movie. That's an issue. That's a lot of. That's a lot of stuff. Honestly. Ne- next week you'll see some Morbius posters behind me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Louis, you had a you had a plan that you were going to put up the posters in your house. And I already did. I've been. <laughs> have they I've been, been removed them. at all? Uh, yes, but I keep putting them behind curtains, like on the window. So when they open, <laughs> Mor- Morbius jump scare. <laughs> oh God, let's not make that motion. It's reminded me of the goatsy thing from Gmod. I'm glad I've never seen that. I've never seen it either. I've actually only seen it in Minecraft, like the pixel version of it. The closest I've ever come to seeing a butthole, and it's me seeing a butthole, was the the video called Cake Farts. Dude, this is this is just a glimpse into what the used the internet used to be for all those children yeah. that are getting goatsy jump scared with this Gmod thing. That's just everything. There was a game called Mazes where when you get to level three, um, the maze would get so small that oh, it would kind yeah. of make you want to like you need uh, to put your head really like, close, That's close classic. to the screen, and then it would pop uh, a jump scare with you, The Exorcist. Uh, that was the tame one too. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of different. That was the one that you can like. Messed up. That one got me. I, I know for a fact that one got me. If you look yeah, up, uh, if you look up Maze's jump scare on YouTube, you will find up like a gold mine of like ten years ago, like just internet gold. Yeah, it was a phenomenon. What, what was that other one with like the car driving down the mountain? Oh, the whatever? fucking oh, car, dude. That was like MySpace era, dude. That was like a trailer, though, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it's been it just like some commercial looking thing, and then it's it just car has, like, the car and, goes, <laughs> and then somebody just <laughs> pops into the face. Yeah, I uh, what is it? There's some like I don't have I talked to you guys about this. This was the first one of the first videos that I uploaded to YouTube when I was a lot younger, like maybe maybe just hit double digits. And yeah, we watched this thing called Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Dramatica, and it was just my three friends and I reacting to seeing this page that is just full of all these horrible jump scare, like grotesque videos and images, gore porn, basically throughout the internet. It's like the whole idea is that you're supposed to get from the uh, top of the page to the bottom without like looking away. And there was a video of us three, like reacting to it, except our reaction just consisted of us. First of all, we didn't show it on the screen because it was YouTube. We knew we'd get banned for that. So it was just our reaction saying that we were looking at the screen. So is the video know, still out there somewhere? It's somewhere. It's somewhere out there. So for all oh. we know, it like we could have been looking at something else. But I can assure you, no, we were men of our words. We all looked at the page and tried scrolling down. But none of us like stuck it from beginning to end. We all had to look away at some point. And then we'd like tag team each other in. So at the very beginning, it's just like, Jesus oh, this isn't that Christ. bad. There's like, it's, it's so cute. There's like a cat with a little melon head hat thing at the, uh, at the beginning. And then you're just thinking to yourself, oh, this isn't that bad. I guess it'll get progressively worse. But no, it just jumps right into like Lemon Party. And then the next photo, I forget the order of it after that. But then it's just us screaming at the top of our lungs, like throwing the laptop across the bed. It'd be like, we're all sitting on a bed. Like, be like, no, you take it. Like, I'm not looking at that shit. No, no. And then like we had high pitched voices. So then it's going like really high pitched. Like, <laughs> like, I can't do it right now. But 4chan used to have this thing. Um... Uh, yes, I was a 4chan nerd back in the day, uh, and they had this this segment. It was called 50-50, and basically uh, they would put a covered photo, and you would have to click on it to see what it was. And they would it would be 50-50, and then it would say oh, yeah. something that what it was, kind of. And it was a 50-50 chance of it being okay or it just being the worst thing you've ever seen. <laughs> The internet was fucking crazy place back then. It was. There was no holds barred, just awful shit everywhere, all the time. I still have yet to see all two girls, time. one cup. I don't want to. Yep, neither have I. Never saw that one or the glass. Just do it on your wedding day. Oh, your wedding day. Oh. <laughs> do you take this woman 
to be your lawfully when I'm giving when I'm giving a bed a oh, best friend speech. God. Okay, I want everybody to look at the screen here. I, I set up a video of uh, <laughs> just two oh, girls, no. one cup. <laughs> Your grandmother instantly dies looking at it. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, we were we were talking about this right before we started recording. Uh, we have Jenna and Scott's wedding coming up very soon. Yep, we're all going to be meeting up. A day or two, actually. Uh, I was going to say we should get. <laughs> we, I mean, it's very unlikely, but all three of us will be together. And then we immediately thought, how can we do it? We can record a podcast episode together. And then I immediately thought, okay, we can play it like uh, pass the mic around whenever we have something to say. Because we'll be lucky if we can find a singular mic. Damn. I mean, do, I don't plan to they be don't sober live there, for the they? entire week. No, no, no. We're not going to be in a place that they live. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to the week. Another wedding. My neighbor is going to be so happy. Not me screaming around. She's going to be ecstatic. Damn, that means chat's not going to have anything to do. All three of us are going to be gone. I'll bring my laptop. I did want to bring stream. my laptop anyway. I don't know if we can stream. Wait, but if you bring, bring your laptop, I can bring like a, uh, I can bring my mic thing and it has three mics. Everybody just bring their mics. This could be done. I could, yeah, I could stuff it into my carry on bag and then we'll be good. Oh, thank you goodness. To bring I bring my microphone. If it's, if it's not too big a deal. But either way, we can discuss that another day. Yeah. Guys, save well, TF2. Tomorrow. Oh, yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> what yeah. about save TF2? Uh, I say like we let it die. Actually. You, do, you want TF2 why to die? You, why would you want TF2 to die? <laughs> I've it's never so played much TF2. Fun. No, I'm, I'm so fucked with you. Fun. I respect it's anybody that likes to play their game. I get it. But, you know, Elder Ring's out there. Just play Elder Ring. Titan, Titanfall, and Team Fortress. The two TF2s came together and said... We share an acronym. Let's both be the greatest games for FPSs ever. And they did. And it was just, they're perfect games. What about Team Fortress <clears> 1? <throat> that was not the perfect game. They decided they wanted to improve it to make it good. It's so more like right. Quake based rather than cartoony. Mm -hmm. I like Quake games. I mean, it, it wasn't a bad game. 2D. It was still pretty cool. You could do things with Pyro where you could like turn around and then like air blast yourself so you could fly around the map at Mach 1. And if you knew the map well enough, you could like basically strafe through the entire map at like inhuman speeds and just absolutely shit on people there's a what lot of they say janky stuff about it what what no, did what? valve say about it they just said we I hear said you and we will get to this eventually and they didn't give any other date besides that i don't <laughs> think we've heard from them since uh but it did get a lot of big very relevant people still talking about team fortress 2 years after what is this, yeah, I saw I saw uh, Critical make a video about it. Ludwig. Yeah, because it's a good game, and it's just horrendously infested by bots. And these bots have like entered the source code, so they can kick you from games. They're just spin botting, which is just instantly aiming and headshotting you every time you turn a corner. They're saying slurs, filling the chat with shit. There at one point was just like a thing where they could put like a timer over the over your HUD, right? That just count down the rounds and it just say the N word. And then it's just a timer. And I never got to the end of that timer. Cause I would leave the server, but like, I always wondered what happened if it reached zero <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never know, <laughs> but that it's just, it's just infected with just crazy shit. And it's just a real shame. But team two's always been like that to be fair. Like there's always been hackers. One of my favorite things that ever happened in team fortress competitively was Valve did this huge rolling ban of all these like cheats. And uh, for those of you that don't know Team Fortress, the competitive scene was this. Um, there's two sides to it. There's there's UGC, which was more casual. And then there was ESEA, which you had to pay to enter the league. And then that was like the more competitive 6v6s. UGC was like 9v9. So you had one of every class instead of two of scout, two soldiers, a medic, and a demo typically. And... Um, after this huge rolling ban of all these cheats on the UGC side, like every, every plat rank, which is the highest rank sniper, almost all of them were banned. Holy all shit. All of them were just banned, which was the funniest fucking thing oh God. ever. Ever. And like, I was playing at that time in plat, and our team sniper wasn't one of them. And he's just like, I told you guys I was too shit to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> And it was so it was so funny. 
But everyone was just scrambling to find snipers that weren't actual cheaters after that, which was fantastic, honestly. Dude, that was wonderful being on a team. Just the whole mm-hmm. idea of not getting paid whatsoever. Just the glory of wanting to win. And I remember it would be you'd have a set time to scrim and then play in matches throughout the week, even though everybody had school and like college, some people were working and all that. But you could still all meet up together and play TF2 in an organized environment with like competitive settings, even though the game wasn't even meant for that. Like you had to use all these custom plugins in order to make these servers happen and everything. It was a great Mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And there was a whole bunch of rules that you had to follow and whatnot. And like, I love how fucked it up even a little bit. Oh my god! It's such a Valve thing to do, though. Like, they have these beautiful games. Like, Valve has made some beautiful games. Like, I'm talking CS:GO and TF2. Like, beautiful multiplayer games that are like still played today. I mean, obviously, Counter Strike is played like globally, fucking offensively. And uh, good one. And uh, (laughs) and uh, they, you literally have to put. Like people make plugins to make the game better, so that it's more it, like it's more competitive and and shit like that. Like, there's a whole thing called Face It that I think also had a TF2 thing. Yeah, that's like um, a little that, recent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, recent to a degree, but the uh, the it makes the servers 128 tick. Uh, it like or 120 tick or something like that. Uh, gives like the 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 cheating is like the the anti cheat super good like everything like that like why can't Valve just do that I don't understand because they've made their money and they're on to bigger and better things like like a Steam Deck have you seen that with a Steam Deck which is it's like cool, a it's honestly. like a handheld Steam thing. it's just a great switch it's just like they looked at the switch and it's like what if we just made this better and free source and then they just did that so like it's basically an it. emulator machine it's crazy you can do I'll... so much with a Steam Deck it's absurd. It's just a better switch. I mean, yeah, they've left all you know, those games in the play Nintendo games, in which case, you know, <laughs> they've left all those <laughs> games in the hands of these modders that are putting these goatsy things up there. It's kind of scary, though. If this story does get out, you know, it might inspire, uh, you know, knock on wood, others to to do the same exact thing, like just easily update oh, their mods already. that they go through the games and stuff. I mean, some of them were done for like good. I remember uh, an author of a pyro hat from Team Fortress Two, like a cosmetic for the pyro. They just thought it'd be funny if they coded it so that you could also put it on the sniper. And then for like, I think it's still in the game for the most part, but once they realized there's not much security into updating the files to the games, they just made it so that like one day, uh, next thing you knew, you could find a sniper in a pyro hat. And that's like the a very light kind of troll to thing, thing to do for mm-hmm. modding. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mods have been around for God knows how long. I mean, I think the most modded game in history is by either Gary's mod or Skyrim. Like the things you can do in Skyrim. Yeah, I do like that hilarious. talk all the shit about Bethesda that you want, but they they like very very like uh what's it? accept or uh encourage modding of their games. Like even mm-hmm. on the PS4 or PS4, yeah, PS4 um Fallout 3, once the mods started rolling in on console, there was a mods tab that you could go through and and like put them on there. It's super cool. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that companies like Valve exist where they're just like, listen, we know that giving you freedom is a dangerous thing, but it could be cool. <laughs> so yeah. they just uh, they just give you the source code to mess with, and they just let you do whatever you want. And they're like, listen, you're adults, kind of. Anyone that knows how to code or do anything malicious is probably an adult. So we'll find you eventually if we decide to care about it. But you can do whatever you want. And there's been some crazy cool things that have happened because of it. And some really fucking awful shit as well. And that's just how it goes. Like, for the longest time, TF2 had uh, animated sprays you could just upload. When I first started playing TF2, 2007... It was the first time you guys saw porn, right? Oh, man. That was... I was so shocked, and I loaded into a world. I'm just sitting there in the spawn room, and then, like, 12 people all go over to a wall. They all look at each other, and then they just put sprays down. It's just a wall of bouncing tits. And I was like, this is the greatest game ever made yeah that, i think tf2 did, yeah i think happen. come to think of it i think tf2 was the first thing that introduced me to hentai just <laughs> anime titties I, I really can't think back to another time that i witnessed that i definitely One saw it, like <laughs> like disgusting porn before then but that was with real people 
Disgusting porn. Porn. As in like, you know, not like yeah, normal yeah. porn, just like shock porn that's like supposed to make you be like, oh my god, what is that? Yeah. There was this one dude that I played with um, way back in the day, and uh, we played on a server where it's just like you're not allowed to do not safe for work um, sprays or whatever. And uh, he always had my favorite GIF. Like it was just real HD, beautiful boobs. Like just nice. beautiful. And like he would come over to me and be like, hey man, check this out. And every single time he would just spray that down real quick and then unspray it. He's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or there was uh, one spy. I'm pretty sure this was a thing that happened a lot of times on YouTube. But like spies could instantly backstab you or kill you instantly from backstabbing you. So one strat was to have a spray like that, so that people would come over and look at it, and then you'd just be cloaked behind them, and you come out of invisibility and you just stab them while they're staring at the tits, and then just go back to lurking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you bait them that way. Yeah. That was a, a oldie but goldie. That was a really good one. There's another cute one where it said, uh, high five me for a free sandwich. And you'd just be a heavy standing there, like with a, uh, standing seal for a high five. And then if you give him a high five, he'll like on emote and then give you the sandwich. It was very wholesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hated friendlies though. When I played, I, I hated them. It's very, you get very uncomfortable if you find yourself in a situation with a friendly and you just like, all right, what do we do now? We're going to just stare at What's each What's a friendly? Other. Friendly is someone that refuses to fight you and will just walk around with like their melee weapon out crouching and looking like I Oh, like in Overwatch here. sometimes yeah. like somebody who refuses to fight. Yeah. I despise them. And what I hate the most is the audacity they have and like why would you kill me? Because you're on the other team, dickhead. Help your team while we're fighting. I don't want to I don't want you to ruin your team's fun because you decide to implement these weird rules. Yeah, but I like it I like it when the when the whole team you. just like for some reason like it, it's that's always fine. like that's the whole team starting it like if this is a conga line of people this tf2 has an emote where it's just like people doing a literal conga and like there's an achievement even for like getting basically a whole server to just conga line around for a little while and everyone gets an achievement that's like a thing i don't mind that what i hate is one person that just gets mad because you're killing them. she's a pacifist or something it. yeah it's infuriating there was a, oh i received death threats for killing a uh for killing a friendly in tf2 I have what? very, throughout the nice. years of my life on YouTube, I have not received many. I don't think I have a very edgy audience, so I wouldn't have edgy threats like that thrown at me. But yeah, there was, it was just me in a video playing Spy, and then I walk up to this heavy, he's just looking up, like crouched, holding a sandwich. I shot him, killed him, and then, yeah, it was, it sparked a lot of debate in my comment section, because it was one of the videos of mine that went viral, and then I checked DMs, I forget where, it might have been through Steam or something, but I don't think you can DM people that aren't friends with you, so it might not be that. But yeah, they just told me that they would uh, come to my house and give me the same fate that I gave the heavy, except in real life. And I was like, wow, that's <laughs> that's a little extreme, dude. <laughs> that's pretty good, man. Yeah, it's scary. I have had very few interactions with people that I would call horrendously unpleasant um, in most games. Like, there's obviously going to be people that say, you know, slurs and shit. That's, you know, not like unexpected. Given. But, like, TF2 has had the most people just message me photos of things I would never want to see. Like, one of them just sent me a picture of his dick. That was, <laughs> was the first nice? time I ever received a dick pic. No, it was pretty, pretty, pretty bad, actually. Like, you know, in retrospect, like, it was a very, very bad penis. Like, it's just not very <laughs> impressive in any capacity. They weren't and skilled at like, taking Why dick pics. Why would you ever send me this? <laughs> and then he blocked me. I was like, I don't understand what just happened. <laughs> I got you. Why did you? Why did you do this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me? Like, it's a very small penis. <laughs> yeah, tell him. <laughs> I was like, I just, I was just confused more than anything. I was like, Why well, don't want this? Why would you send this to someone? <laughs> I, I felt, I felt a kinship with all the girls on the internet. <laughs> And all around the world, they oh, just received random dick pics. That's what that Those means. Poor bastards. Yeah. I was that's like, oh, so this feels. is that feeling. I get it. I mean, I remember I that that's happened to me uh, before. Like, uh, this gay dude, like, was coming on to me very, very, very strongly and, like, sending me pictures and doing, like, random stuff. And then I was like, oh, I'm, what, you know, I'm chilling with the – no, in, in person. Oh, okay. And, uh, I, like – yeah, it was very strange, and uh, that's why I I kind of don't like do that to to people, 
I mean, I guess you shouldn't you shouldn't <laughs> do that to people person, in general. So. <laughs> but like having gone through like something like that where it's just very like relentless, it's kind of like, oh, uh, that's it's yeah, it sucks, man. It's like, and it feels like it's it, girls go through that shit every fucking day. Like a lot, mm-hmm. like a lot of people go through that shit every fucking day. That's it really sucks. I fucking don't envy that. It's the God honest truth. I don't know how girls go through with half the shit. That's why I think some of our friends don't even have voice chat enabled. I think because of how much shit they get, like in yeah. Overwatch especially. Yeah, because it's not like it's not like your attitude or something or yeah. whatever you say. It's just the fact that they can tell that you might sound like a girl from your voice, and then they'll, they'll immediately attack you. Or, like, yeah, uh, just be weird in general. Attack yeah. or be yeah, weird. Guys on the or just, internet can yeah. suck. Like, I mean, men suck in general a lot of the time, but, like, on the internet, it's a special breed, usually, I think. Yeah, I mean, online, it's uh, it's just, like, you can send them messages, harass them, and all that. You can still do that when you know them in person. It's just that there's yeah. the extra step that you can go because you know them in person. They probably do both. There's a, there's a thing I followed on Twitter recently called criminal tweets, which are hilarious to me because they're, they're criminal. Like, the things that they say or just let do or whatever is just, like... It's not okay. Like one of them is just like, it, explain to me where it says that I'm breaking the law. And someone like quotes like a legal book where it says he's breaking the law, and the guy's just like, I'm not reading that. <laughs> <laughs> and like another one is like, I think it was a picture of Belle Delphine. I want to say where she's just like, I'm trying to find myself or something to that. And like some dude like immediately under her tweet said, It's okay. I found you. And it's just a picture of her like sitting down outside, and it's just like. Oh shit, that's not oh, good. Oh fuck. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you meant like oh god. Like literal criminal tweets and some of them are funny and some of them are very much not okay. But that's uh that's one I've been following recently. Oh. You know what I've been watching a lot lately? And What's it's that? kind of weird. I've been I've been falling down this rabbit hole of what's called stealth camping. Stealth Have you ever heard of that? Camping? You guys ever heard of stealth camping? God's name is Stealth. Camping. Okay, so it's this guy. I f- I forget his YouTube channel, and I will drop it in the comment section after. But he's this really really wholesome dude, like super nice guy. Uh, and what he does is he just camps a lot, and he'll camp in like various locations, various vehicles, and stuff like that. Um, but he does this thing called stealth camping. So he'll find like a like a roundabout, uh, in like a busy street right and then he'll just camp in the roundabout without getting caught and he'll the whole night is like him like talking to his phone is like i hope the i hope the cops don't don't come see us and then cops will like come by and stuff like why that. does he have it's like re- a setup that looks like he's camping out but it's kind of hard to assume that he is it's no 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 like, like it, he's like literally camping in shrubbery oh and and stuff like it's that and a weird I, thing to do honestly and no there's yeah, a he, thrill of that yeah, it's oh, it's sure. kind of interesting. It's like, uh, and he like he'll do this thing where like he'll prepare for it, so he'll get all of his stuff, and then he's like, oh, and I'm gonna eat a a chicken wrapped sandwich or something like that, and then like you'll see him like, uh, I saw him get like a a lettuce bag and then shake up the chicken in the lettuce bag, and he's like, oh fuck, this is too loud, and then it's like he's like giving reviews of everything. And it, I don't know, it's just really fucking interesting. And I saw him, like, camp on, like, a deserted little island. Uh, just doing, like, this weird, I don't know, it's, it's just an interesting uh, place I found myself on YouTube. <laughs> and I do it every now when, I, I, when, I, huh. when I'm falling asleep. I just hear, I just listen to stealth camping. It's pretty cool. One thing that I hate more than anything is going camping. Why? Like, Well, I, I also hate I... camping, but... Camping is the worst thing ever, I think, to put yourself through. Like, I just... Nothing about camping is comfortable in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. And it just seems awful. Like, stealth camping adds a little aspect to it. It's like, well, are we going to get caught tonight? Oh, ooh. And, like, that might be, you know, interesting to do. But, like, just people that are like, hey, I'm going to go camping for a week in, like, a mountain. I'm like, but why? What? <laughs> why would you do that? I also like the people that they they camp in their their trucks. Like uh, they have their the back of their truck kind of like made into this place where it has like a bed on the side, and then 
another thing. Um, also, one of the videos I saw about the stealth camping is that he he had this like propane thing to heat up his food, and in the one of the videos it like caught fire. He threw it, and it caught a lot of fire while he was stealth camping, and then he just keeps bringing it up on every sub sketch, like every substantial video. Uh, uh, uh sure he's like, "Oh, well, we're not, we're not sure doing the pyro uh thing anymore. We're not, we're not doing uh the propane. I, I got rid of that thing. <laughs> like, he just keeps saying it over and over and over again. Also, yeah, right did, did you ever? What? No, what were you gonna say? The uh, do you know that video of the the garbage truck going on fire? Mm-hmm. You've seen that, like where the the thing is picking mm -hmm. it up, and then it the, the oh yeah the, yeah, yeah 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 yeah, and it's just like spontaneous combust. That's not a fucking random video. I mean, yes, it's a random video. If you go on that guy's channel and look at all of his videos, he just has an obsession with garbage trucks. Every day he uploads a different video of people uh uh doing his garbage trucks. Oh, fish would like that channel a lot then. It's just. <laughs> It's fucking weird. It's crazy. You guys, uh, I mean, it's not the... weird. I, I don't want to call him weird. I, it's interesting. No, it's it's weird. It's interesting, but it's weird. I mean, to view, to constantly recording film somebody stuff, doing a daily activity and then uploading like a, it and cool realizing movie. that you have a different perspective every day. Yeah, that's pretty unique, I'd say. And the yeah. thing is, he'll he'll like let the person gra grab the garbage at his house, and then as the garbage truck is going to the next house, he'll run after it. And then, like, <laughs> it's me, Louis. And then I'm just the film me. It's That's you. <laughs> that, it's actually fish. So you tell me this is actually fish. This, okay, the background of this, in case you didn't see the video that we were referencing. Yeah, I made a joke that when I moved here to LA, I didn't have a garbage truck come right to my house and pick up my trash, and I had to put out the trash right in front of my house. I would just have a shoot in my apartment building in New York. So I said I got excited by it, and I'd chase after it. And that was a joke that we were referencing right now. But yeah. Fish is obsessed with garbage trucks now. Like he he texts me all the time. Like every t every time it's garbage day, he'll send me a picture. And he's like, I got closer this time. And it's just like a picture of him making that terrible angled face. And in the background is the garbage truck, and the guy's just throwing it in the back every time. And he's getting progressively closer. Eventually, he's going to be able to handshake one of them. Yeah, it's stealth <laughs> trashing is what I call it. It's my new stealth series <laughs> that I've been working on. <laughs> Can we stealth like camp and do a and podcast once? Can Try to please? see how long we can record a podcast before, like, someone asks us to leave. Yeah. That'd be funny. Yeah, let's go to Area 51. No. I want to do that. Can we go to Area 51 and record a podcast while we're trying we'll to just go to that. We'll go down to, like, the L.A. River or something and just set up, like, our chairs and, like, a laptop with the SM7Bs. And, like, and we're just doing our podcast and stealth camping. That'd be so fun. We should do that. We should absolutely do that. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, I did uh, – we're getting closer and closer to that moment. My landlord now officially knows that I'm looking to move out in a few months. <sighs> so he knows the dates around there. Why? Why? So why does he know? Why does he know? In case I, I just wanted to ask him in case like uh, there's anything contractual or payment wise that you know was kind of complicated or not so clear. So I just talked to. Are him. Are you gonna so hire movers? Who under that? Yeah, yeah, probably. It's so much easier. Just drop the drop the. I don't think it's, anything it's got, could be harder than the move that I had to do from fucking New York to yeah. California. I did the move from Miami miserable. to, 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 uh, Cali. LA as well. But even the, just the sole idea of getting stuff down from an apartment building is so much easier or excuse me, vice versa. Yeah. It's so much harder than getting it from, you know, a house to the front of your yeah. porch or whatever. But also you've bought a lot of stuff here. So you didn't come here with all the stuff that you own. Like, now this is everything you own. You have your bed, your couch, your TV, oh, yeah, your yeah, yeah. nightstand, your fucking everything, your bed stand, your fucking like just hire a fucking mover. It's like 600 bucks. It's the most worth it thing I've ever done because like I would it for my house. It's like three stories. It would have been a, I would have literally killed myself. Probably I, like I would have died. <laughs> Moving is like, the worst thing ever period when you're doing it and then the best thing after you've actually reached your destination everything's finally settled in because you're like ah finally i don't have to worry about this ever again is usually what you think and then you have to do it eventually yeah. sometime in the future but like when my parents were moving oh my god my mom got so mad at me because she wanted me and my brother to come over and help her and my dad move which is fine but the thing is my parents own a whole ass house there's a whole yeah. ass lot of shit and i said mom why don't you just let me pay for movers 
because I don't want to do this. It sucks, and there's a lot of shit. I will literally just pay for it. And she got so mad at me because I kept bringing it up. And she's just like, we're not hiring movers or whatever. We're like, anything but the really big shit. I'm like, but why? <laughs> it would be so much easier. I yeah. don't understand. Like, I after, after moving from my understand. last house into this house and not having to do anything, there is no way I'm moving without movers ever again. It, 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 yeah. It's so much easier. And also, that movers, fucking, your job sucks, dude. Holy yep. fuck. Could you imagine just you every watch. day of work? Hey, we're moving another house. Like, oh, like, oh, dude. That sucks, dude. I, uh, I can't even imagine. I envy them. Yeah, it's Literally, just stressful. Uh, it is I, I, one of my friends about. tells me, oh, I'm moving soon. Like you saying, I'm moving soon. My heart dropped because I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to have to help him move. Uh, <laughs> that's their, that's these people's jobs, dude. That sucks yeah, yeah. <laughs> to feel that way. <laughs> they come into work, man. I sure hope nobody's moving today. <laughs> <laughs> you get the call. You take it. No, you take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally my, the people that moved me in to this thing, uh, the guy gave me his number, his card, the personal, the guy is like, uh, make sure that when you're moving if out of this house, you call this number and I will make sure I am off that day. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> oh my God. That's so good. I will make sure I'm off that day. How much stuff did you fucking move for this guy? It's not like, that it's out of stuff. It's that it's, it's three stories and it's really small kind of not the yeah. house is not small, but the entrances are like, it's weird. You do have an interesting I get you. design. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I always think I own I don't own a lot of things. And I think compared to most people, uh, I don't own much, genuinely. But every time you move you realize you have so much more stuff than you thought you possibly could have had. It's actually kind of crazy. Just looking at the kitchen is terrifying, that's what I think. It's just looking at all the stuff you have in the drawers and the cupboards, mm -hmm. the the utensils and all that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not ideal. The dust, the critters that are just in the crevasses. When you move stuff, you find them. Do you guys have a Do you guys have a goal for a house that you guys want to buy when you're just settled? Because right now, I'm pretty sure we're all doing rent. All three of us are in a rent situation right now. So, what is your ideal building. house? My, this is easy for me. It's a bunker underground. A bunker. Yeah, I don't. I want to be underground. I don't want to have to worry about. Wouldn't that be bad anything. for Wi-Fi? I want it to yeah. Be, no, but I mean, I guess you could just put it up. Thing that runs it. Like uh, I'll be close to a power line or something, so I get fiber just shooting straight to the ground. You don't want a view <laughs> from like a window. Fuck a view. I have never in my life understood the point of having a room with a view. Not even remotely. Not even Some just a view, just outside. Hey, I'll go upstairs crazy. if I want. Call me crazy. Outside. Some people enjoy their lives like it doesn't make any sense my mom and used to you know it's funny you, you we always on... make this argument it's like why the fuck would anybody eat expensive food why the like he's the minority anybody? in every why situation why the fuck would anybody ever <laughs> it just like, doesn't make any watch sense a movie me. that makes them sad why the fuck would anybody it's true i don't understand <laughs> like why you would watch you. a movie that makes you sad <laughs> I don't know. You're in the minority. So much fun. Sorry for screaming. To eat food, it makes no sense. Like it's just food. Some people like to it. enjoy <laughs> their <laughs> life. Why would Dumont you pay wants like, us to be mole people living in the <laughs> underground? To the top with no some <laughs> we should be outside right now. <laughs> mole people. <laughs> <laughs> like why would you go to the top of some shitty building that costs like four thousand dollars more for the exact same room you would get by just being like four floors lower? My mom used to make such a big issue when we were in when we vacation anywhere in any hotel, and she's just like, "This room has a terrible view. I'm going directly, directly to the hostess, and I'm going to find a way to get us a better room." I'm like, mom, why? For what purpose? It's fine. There's a tree there. Who cares? It's a tree. They're everywhere. It'll be fine. And we would always get our room upgraded every single time because my mom was very persuasive. <laughs> We'd always go up an extra floor, and we'd have a room with a view, and I would never understand, ever. So you want a, a bunker home. No like, what? how many bedrooms? Huh? How many bedrooms? For what? Do you, you want to live, like, in 10 Cloverfield home. Lane? Oh, in, my, in my 
thing. Uh, ideally, like one big studio area and then like a bedroom, one and then like a area. bathroom. That would be fine for me. I, I, I don't I don't crave much in this in this mortal world. I really don't. Just enough space to do my stuff, and I would never have to worry about sound or disturbing people. It'd just be my little bunker. It'd be like a like a <laughs> be a mailbox and a dumb waiter. <laughs> It's like my order fucking food. sewer hole entrance. <laughs> my order, my order food. The guy goes over like, yeah, just go to the mailbox. There's gonna be like a little square box. Just open it up, put the food on there, and I'll just dumb waiter down, and you'll be good to go. And I'll send up your tip. <laughs> oh my you're good to go. I think that's I think that's a perfect way to live. I think it's perfectly fine. What about you, Louis? Maybe a garage. Maybe like a garage up top that like. Leads I'd like to enjoy my life. I don't know. Like to the cellar, a fucking like house on the hill would be fucking outlet. dope. House with a view, pool, windows, sunlight, know, pool. movies. I can understand like a tennis court, kids, or basketball happiness, court. food. Pools Sounds like great things to me. Of an issue. You, didn't mention any you know what of I this? would? You know what I would like? Not like <laughs> to that? live like a mole person. <laughs> The, it's like about like the bare minimum of what I don't want. Uh, you just go crazy <laughs> down there. And you know what Tubal would think when he's like a year into living? He'd think what he's Louis stuck just down there. To me is my least favorite thing. I don't want kids. <laughs> I don't want to be on the hills. Uh, I would never want a pool. I've had a pool. They are such a pain in the ass to That's me. That's why you okay. fucking Jacuzzi hire somebody to fucking clean it. Well, sorry, I'm not made of money. I can't just assume I'm going to have well, someone. That's what I ask is that when you say you're all well put together, when you're like as best as you can be in your life, when you have a steady income. I'm never going to be that rich. I'm <laughs> never going to be that rich. You just need to I hope I am. I want to prove myself wrong. That'd be great. But like, I'm not assuming I'm going to be making like six figures on the regular very easily type deal. You know what I mean? Well, living not like this... you want to leave. If living. How you say you want to live. If you make six figures once, you'll be fine for the rest of your life. That's perfectly good for me. Then I can spend <laughs> money on people that need the money more than I do. What? Cost and I don't prices. require money for many things. <laughs> all I've ever wanted is my little home with a nice with all the things that I want, fast internet, <laughs> hot water, a garage so I don't have to fucking shovel snow off my fucking car. <laughs> Oh God! I'm seeing some prices here. There's fifty thousand for a structure dug into the side of a hill. <laughs> On the upside, an abandoned missile silo home with some acreage. How do you say that, that word? Acreage. Cool shit, though. May cost that over one cool, million. Though. Where is that? A it doesn't million? say where. Okay, yeah, that's over a million. Like abandoned uh, missile you got... silo might be out there. Are you looking up bunker homes? I literally just looked up, yeah, bunker homes, <laughs> underground <laughs> prices. Oh my goodness, underground yeah, they're, homes yeah, probably. yeah, they're going for about a hundred thousand to buy these houses. That's good deal. That's good. That's good, good money right there. I'd spend that in a heartbeat. As long as they're near a place where like it has fiber, I'm golden. Affordable bunkers to survive the apocalypse. Money. I don't want to survive the apocalypse. I'll, I'll come out of the, of the bunker if I hear that there's a nuke about to hit. I'm like, I ain't living through this. Ain't no way in hell. Just standing outside. Yeah, exactly. Take Why me. would you want to live through a nuclear apocalypse? <laughs> Why? Everybody's trying some to of leave us. the building. Tubold is going at the top hear me out. of the initial impact. <laughs> hear me out. Some of us enjoy life. There is no way you enjoy all life forms. after a nuclear apocalypse. There is no shot in hell. In all forms. All forms a nuclear apocalypse. You yes, want to live in a deserted, uh, is it so crazy that I don't wasteland. want to die? Yes, in that scenario, yes, unless, it's very crazy. Unless the whole I, I was talking to, to Joey about this, my roommate about this the other day. Um, unless the whole world is dying, I do not want to die because my fear of missing out, my FOMO would go fucking through, <laughs> through the roof. <laughs> FOMO, really? That's it. That's what keeps you. <laughs> <laughs> like the only apocalypse I could fathom someone wanting to live in is like the zombie apocalypse because at least you have something to do every day. You just wake up and you're like, I'm going to go kill like 50 zombies. Yeah. Like I could wrap my mind around that. If that's like the kind of life you want to live, I personally obviously don't fucking want to do that. That sounds awful again, because it's just gross everywhere. And there's just dead bodies that are after you that just die again. And then there's still gross everywhere. 
Like, I watched The Walking Dead, and I'm like, man, you guys have shotguns you haven't used on yourselves yet. That's crazy. <laughs> like, this just seems like the worst thing ever. And you, everyone is just gross, and there's nothing good about living through the zombie apocalypse at all. Except you for when like, that the chick ground, has two swords. Tubal. Tubal, like, there's always everyone. a shelter that gets hinted at. And then you, once yeah. you discover it, it's been overrun by zombies and there's nobody exactly. there. But then you can have a chapter where you get to survive out there for a little until humans find you. And then they want to steal your uh, resources, but you don't have any to offer. But then they accuse you of lying and then you move on to the next chapter. It's always like that. There's always somewhere in the world that it's assumed that there's people and shelter. And you want to know one thing that doesn't make any sense to me? Every time they're like, give us your resources, not a single person just like, do you have any fucking toilet paper? <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> I've been shitting on leaves for months. Where's the toilet paper? <laughs> yeah, that's... that's I, I just, I don't want to live in a gross world. I would not survive if I went back in time, like even 50 years, I would be bored out of my mind. I have no idea what I would want to do. Yeah, my body isn't good with digesting uh, new foods a lot. I feel like I'm a pretty good <laughs> I, I'm not very, I'm not very experimental with, <laughs> with new foods. I'll be honest, most of the time. The transition was funny. Oh my god! So <laughs> I, I've just always known that about, about myself. I'm not this. good. My body does not <laughs> take new foods that I've ever tried before very well. So you God, just shit a couple times, you'll be fine. Like, <laughs> someone with it, like personal dietary restrictions in an apocalypse are just like, do you have anything that's non-dairy or no meat? Yeah, no. you think they're gonna fucking I care I'm about a vegetarian. that? Vegetarian. <laughs> Damn, that's rough, dog. Ain't no vegetation around. You're gonna have to eat that cat. <laughs> Not Mr. Whiskers. It's so nice that we have to. We get to have these problems of people oh, being yeah. like gluten free or you know sad when people like <laughs> can eat. <laughs> free or sad <laughs> yeah, it's i like, feel we, bad for people that like for religious reasons are just like i can't eat these foods i'm like mm -hmm. those are some good foods though and like i'm saying that like i don't care about food but even i'm just like damn dog that's rough man you can't have that that's i can it's a damn shame. But, like, a zombie apocalypse takes up the nth level. What scares me is, like, the future with space travel and, like, having to be on, like, a space station, like uh, Xenon in the 21st century. You ever see that movie as a kid? Of course. Where some humans live up in, like, a, a space colony type thing, essentially. Xenon the like, sequel. Yeah. And then, like, what if you just have one crazy dude that's just like, I built a bomb. And you're like, oh, no. And then the entire thing just explodes. <laughs> yeah, it's just gone. Yeah. And then it would have like a cool that. scene in space where it cuts to outside of the spaceship and then it's all silent. But mm -hmm. there's like a bunch of explosions. If you knew oh, that there was going to be a bomb, a nuclear bomb that was just going to wipe you out and kill you in less than a second, what would be the position that you'd take? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just because I was thinking about that while we were talking about apocalypses and I'm just like, I feel like it would hurt my ears a lot. So I'd try to cover them so it wouldn't like. I guess destroy my eardrums and then just burn the rest of my body first, you know, because there's more layers covering out. my ears. Praise the sun. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I'm trying From to Dark die. Souls. I want that. I want it to be like my thumbs out or whatever so everyone knows. I want to have like a crusader. Oh, so on. when the fucking. So my body turns oh. to ash against the wall, it just you. has a thing there and then it becomes a meme in like the four future. It's like, and this is where john's son died and it's just my my ashen like remains just carved into the wall essentially and it just oh, so you want to go for like a, a natural museum made type i'm thing. just doing like two dogs <laughs> <laughs> talking to each other <laughs> Right above your head, and then, and then I'll be i'll be like a kid in the background like clapping <laughs> <laughs> I like the guy that does like a monkey pose where like his arms are above his head. He's going to go, woo! <laughs> just turns into turns to ash against it. We don't know what these guys were thinking in their last moments, but we thought it might be pretty funny. <laughs> that was one of the coolest things that was available in my school was that there was a class where, um, I forget which specific class it was, but it was a yearly thing that we'd have to make these shadow puppets. So we'd have to cut out these black pieces of paper and then attach them to, uh, to plastic so they could slide across paper easily. And then it was part of the class that you would present a shadow puppet show to some of the younger kids. Cause my, my class or my school was K through 12. 
So there's like a various different group of, of kids for uh, each class. But yeah, that was dope. Just being able to put on a shadow puppet show. That was like something that That's everybody cool. looked forward to. Both of the people that made it and the viewers, like the, the kids that were watching it. Just a very wholesome memory that you just unlock. That's awesome. That actually reminds me of when um, I was, because I was always reading when I was a kid. And especially in middle and high school, I would think I emptied out the fantasy section of my school's library. Like I read nonstop all the time in the hallways between classes or whatever. Uh, at one point there, uh, they asked if I would go to like one of the elementary schools um, and just read some stories to them for like a week or whatever, since they were having a story thing going on. And I was like, yeah, sure. Totally. I loved reading to those kids. That was so much fun. I got to put voices to all the characters for the books. They're just like, you're one of the best readers we've ever had. The kids had their attention on you the whole time. Normally, they're just goofing off, but you did so well. And I was like, man, that makes me feel good. (laughs) The one thing I'm good at. (laughs) And I think it's all because my mom would read to me when I was a kid. I just got to sit there, like, in her bed before going to bed myself. And she'd just read us Harry Potter stories and, like, things like that. And she would always put on, like, little voices or whatever and read to us. That was probably, like, the most wholesome thing. You can do and you won't even help her move. memory and you didn't help I her move, helped her you move monster. I just complained you fucking monster <laughs> and my mom would always make the weirdest decisions okay like when it comes to moving shit like every holiday she has me and my brother pick up these two massive I'm talking massive like cork board heavy as shit boards to put up to bring up to the table to make it longer so that family could come over and I'm like mom you're always putting stuff over the table hear me out what if we just kept them there like this all the time so we never had to worry about this ever again? And she's like, no, it doesn't look symmetrical. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's just a square. And she would just be like, no, you go and take those downstairs. Right you now. listen to your fucking mom, you monster. She used to read to you. I do, every time. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, here's a perfectly reasonable solution. And she's like, no. And I'm like, all right, it's your house. Your Tubal rules, is fair Spock. enough. Your be... logic. <laughs> I just don't understand why people don't take the easy route more often. Like it's it's there for a reason. It's a perfectly good route. There's very few bumps on it. It's just a nice route. It's a good place to go. Speaking of like reading, I did. Take... I finally got a lamp for my bed, so I don't have to hold up my phone light up against the books that that I'm reading. And yeah, it's just it's weird the whole idea of shopping for a lamp because I remember the lamps that I have back at home, they're old as shit. Like, they get the job done, but don't get me wrong. They're so old. They're like the ones that you, like, pull down, except it's kind of rusty to the point that you really have to yank on it in order for the light to turn on. It still works fine, though. So that's, like, I'm not complaining about it. But now, today, when I was looking at lamps to, to purchase, they're just so modern. Like, I didn't even think that this would be a convenient thing to have on the side of my lamp, but it makes so much sense that a phone charger. Right now, I just have something going into the outlet, but now I'm not going to have that anymore because this lamp has this available feature oh. it comes with a remote as well Holy and there's a side shit. lamp piece to it bruh Dude. technology has advanced imagine you'd be living like a fucking mole person <laughs> yeah we'll be up here with our phone charging lamps well you'll be down there with a lighter and a mirror why would to try i to make have it, a lamp i don't understand <laughs> try to make you don't like you enjoy your life hole. you would probably get a lamp that is broken be happy with it. I have a lamp right <laughs> here I love. This shit's great. I thought today the light bulb was going to die. It got so dark for like a full second. Like it started stuttering. I was like, oh, today's the day. Today's the day. And then it just went back to normal. I was like, mother, every time you bait me. <laughs> <laughs> for context, I've had this light bulb in this lamp for over two years. This lamp, this light bulb will not die. It has been, it, it just, it taunts me. It's like, oh, today's the day. Ooh, ah, and then it's fine. Well, there was something about that is that light bulb companies did that on purpose. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, or else they wouldn't a big make any conspiracy. money if they made... Yeah, well, actually, they, it's not even a conspiracy theory. It's proven. Yeah, they wouldn't yeah, make know, any money like, if they can like only a... send sell one product to each family across the world. Like, they need to consistently yeah, like, be is, selling uh, it. What's it called? This is like a... This has lasted far too long, if that's the case. Like, it just it keeps living. Like, Wasn't every time like, it's like, oh, it's right there. It's fine. Yeah. I was going to say for the day it happens. There was a, there was a time period though, where that was like the thing to aim for was the light bulb that lasted uh, as long as fuck. And then they they had to stop it immediately because they realized maybe you have a light bulb from that era. (laughs) No, definitely not. This is uh, is a modern era. It's too white to be that from there. Yeah. It's too, it's too, the light is too bright. It's not a white filter over it. 
Do you guys, when you get light bulbs, do you guys go for the the homey colored one or the one that's more like clear? I go for smart smart bulbs. Yeah, but like I'm talking about the light they project. Like, do you get the one that's like very? You warm consider colors homey or... like warm colors? No, I'm not a big. You want to see something crazy? Warm colors. I want to see something crazy about smart bulbs. What's that? It's changing well, that's from not the a light bright bulb. color. Okay, this is to the this homey is... color. I actually have that as well. Here, wait, what button is it? Is this one, right? Yeah. Here's the homey color. Here, I'll make it very bright so it's easier to see. Don't worry, guys. For the audio listeners, we're literally just we're just changing our changing lights, changing the settings of our lights. You're not missing out on one anything. One of them makes fish look like he's he's like super tan. That's a good. A that's very, a. I like that. A very that, warm. You like that one? Skin tone, and then there's yeah. one that makes him look like he's in a horror movie where he's like. That's just my face too under, bold. No, the, that one that makes one. it look like oh, wait, yeah, this is the that, blue, yeah, that this one is, right this there straight up makes it look like one. you're in like saw like the saw basement essentially <laughs> yeah like it looks like, like there's it, just like the fluorescent, fluorescent bulbs above your head yeah i like That's the i like the color one really I, I yeah. don't. I'm not a big. I think fan that one's though. the best one. That I think it's good. also because this that's the, the same next color as the old fashioned yeah. lamp that I have going on in my house. Honestly, yeah. Go, answering that question that I brought up before, this house is so nice, like such a good setup. The only thing that I change is how modern it is because everything is so old. But I'm not obviously gonna update this house that I'm renting and I'm moving out soon. But this this whole setup that I have going on is perfect. I would just make the bedrooms bigger because my living room is huge. Um, besides that, it's cute. Big yet backyard and everything. One thing I'm not gonna miss about this house is every time I turn on the hot water, like either in the sink or in the shower, the pipes scream. <laughs> they just straight up make a high pitched whistling sound Those if the you're at a certain bold. temperature. They're trying to set yeah, up that's, a colony. That's, in that's there. really old plumbing. Yeah, like it they just screams. And I'm just like, this is so obnoxious <laughs> like I, 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 i've suffered with it because it honestly isn't that big a deal but like if i could get rid of it i would be so much happier my shower doesn't have an in-between when it comes to temperature in terms of like literally i, I haven't sh i haven't used the cold knob since i moved in when i discovered that it doesn't do anything it doesn't do it you have no cold water no i can get cold water but i've tried it like i put my my heat on to normal average shower temperature and then i try turning on the cold it doesn't do anything no matter how high it is unless you have it as a higher setting than the hot knob and then it starts getting freezing so i haven't used my cold huh. knob since i moved in <coughs> they don't let it split together that's crazy yeah very strange oh man what if we share a bathroom tube when we move in together it's not that bad i don't like sharing but i mean you know it's fine it's, it's true really unlikely. That um, so long as you use Febreze, I think we'll be fine. And also, you don't let the tub look like it's infected with the red shit that just gathers around the drain. Like you're also conscious of that with me. I think we'll be fine. I, you know, I've dormed in college for four years, so I mean, like, <laughs> it's not like I'm not used to it. Ah, oh, dorming is so bad, though, dude. It's yeah, ugh. it's the worst. They're Genuinely they're so worse. disrespectful. I, mm -hmm. I can't I don't understand it what goes through other people's minds when they're just drunk and ready to throw up so they decide to just I get that you're like not in a state of mind but dude how do you just make the bathroom your canvas and the paint is your vomit <laughs> bro? it just makes no sense <laughs> like you can you make can it as a toilet I am the most conscientious drunk I took a shower when I was blackout drunk because I was like I must smell he took a shower I don't even remember out. taking the shower. Yeah. I don't even know whose towel I used. I genuinely don't remember a single instance. You air dried. I remember it. He it walked out naked. It was so funny. And then we were yeah, like, we saw what are you doing? Dick. And he's like, I, I don't have a towel, so I got to let him hang. And then he started running up and down the block until he was dry. And then he crawled back. <laughs> he was good to I go. Need to get, I need to be blown. Louie and I stood like, watch to make sure any cops weren't passing by, you know, because there's a naked man running. Or any, mm -hmm. no, no women were flocking towards him. Yeah. They would not be flocking. Yeah, we would have had to help hold them back. I run weird when I'm drunk. So I do think I'm some kind of cryptid. I feel like you run weird, weird all the time. You, I've never you thought like a of Titan these. From I, never, Titan. I never imagined you running, but I'm imagining you running right now, and it's definitely weird. No matter what. No, I, I mean, no. like, I took like I took a lot of sports when I was growing up. So, like, I have, like, the general took physical of ability of, like, like... Well, here's the thing, right? There's one kid that I used to work with um, that... 
you know those people that just don't know how to throw a ball like they just throw it weird like their arm is at a very awkward angle or whatever yeah. like i can throw a normal ball and i can run like a normal like like sports way where like everything is just it looks correct yeah like there are just some people that didn't grow up with like any sports whatsoever and they don't get it so when they throw shit it's just fucked up and when they run it just looks wrong there's oh my god one of my one of my good friends has the funniest fucking run i've ever seen in my life and the first time i met him was at soccer rec soccer he runs with his arms all the way up at his chest like flared out like a chicken and he would run like this why with his arms like pivoting forward and that was just how he ran and it was the it would make me laugh every single time i'd love to see all of our friends at jenna's wedding run we should have a race like, like it's just and a hundred so, meter dash a, like in soccer too when you're running like this with your arms flailed out like a chicken like you can't get near him because his arms <laughs> <are> like, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the ref oh. would constantly give him yellow cards because someone would just fucking run into his arm. oh no yeah dude so one one day when we were playing basketball there's there's no teachers or anybody nearby i guess that's why he felt the i guess safety to be able to do this my friend was holding the ball and then uh, he was in a position where he couldn't he couldn't pass it to anyone or he couldn't like continue to dribble or else he would have uh, traveled or he would have given up the ball. So then he's just holding the ball there like like double arming it, just praying that there would be an opening while there's like three guys around him. And then he, and then he just started. All right, I give up. And then he just started rotating and tornadoing it. He elbowed. <laughs> I shit you not. I I think I was one of the people that was victim to it. Three of us got knocked down, and we we're like, guys, we need a timeout. You just removed the whole team with your tornado of elbows, and he knocked over everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was. That was a main character moment for him. I remember that. <laughs> that was a brutal day. <laughs> Did you guys ever do like? Did you guys ever find yourself in a position where you found someone that was just like so good, you're just like, oh, there's just nothing I can do about this situation? I find that I find myself in that situation all the time with music, all the time. Okay, but like, are you especially me? as a kid, for like the first time, where you run into someone where you're just like, what? Is they so much better than me? Fuck yeah, it's like like leagues better. Like they just have a gear that they can shift into that you just didn't even know existed. When I played soccer, there was one moment that just demoralized me for the rest of my life. We were playing rack soccer. Okay, there's like three leagues okay there's rec there's travel which is which is you know impressive and then there's premier which is like the best of the travel team which are already better by leagues than the rec team and we got put into an exhibition match against a premier team and their star forward like we played at night like at their at their at their field and we played at night and they had the lights shining down you know how your like hand like you know, kind of makes the after images when you're looking at the lights or whatever in the dark hmm. or whatever. This kid ran so fast, it looked like he had an after image. He was so fucking fast with that soccer ball, none of us could touch him. He scored like six goals by himself just running through Huge. us. He was so fucking fast. It was Dude, absurd. at that point when you're running that fast, you don't need form because you just know that any of your, what do you call it, your strides will kick the ball forward enough for you to continue to... No, it's exactly what happened. The ball, but he kept control of the ball, like obviously yeah, so yeah. well because he was a premier student or uh, player. But like, he was, he was so fast. <laughs> I had never run into someone where like I couldn't like at least keep pace, even if I was behind them. Like I could at least keep a remote pace while they tried to deal with the ball. This kid was just fucking gone, booking and, it, and like he would, he would, he just disappear. He would just disappear, and I was like, Coach, I don't know what to do. And he's like, Trust me, there is nothing you can do. <laughs> he is just better and i'm like that's a weird concept i'm gonna have to get used to i've never met someone I'm that was just this much not better. the best <laughs> it wasn't even just that it's just like I that can't much better like like yeah, yeah i just can't compete because he's the same age as me and he was just he's so fast <laughs> like to this day i still remember like i just have this vivid image of when he started at one end of the field and i was next to him and then I started running with him, and he got the ball. And then his back just grew so small in front of me. And I could, like, just see him, like, moving his arms so fast that the images were there. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's not a superhero shit. It's like the Flash. <laughs> it's just gone. I was like, all right, well, we, that's another goal. <laughs> all right, well, yeah, I think we can, we can yeah, call it right good. there. You didn't give the kid a name, right? I was going to say, let us strive to be the next whoever that kid was in soccer. Flash. 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 
Yeah, let us strive to be the next Flash and create an after image in whatever we're doing. Oh, so that it may be marked down in history with our name. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Fish Tank Podcast. We will catch you guys next week. We're always uploading at the same exact time. Uh, every Tuesday at 5 a.m. PST. That is always whenever we upload our episodes. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. Also, in the comment section down below, tell us about a time where you got absolutely diffed by someone else <laughs> to a point where you just couldn't remember anything. But yeah, have a good one. Goodbye. See you That's next time. That's a good time. comment. Later. Goodbye, everybody.